This is Matt for Into Boxing. Delighted to be joined by Eddie Hearn. Eddie, we're here for Conor Ben Media Day, but first off, don't ask you about Tyson Fury because everyone's done that. Talk to me about the magnitude of this event coming up. You've just had Canelo Triple G3. You've had historic nights like Kate Taylor Serrano. Talk to me about your... Sure, get us, get us. Let me get to that. Joshua Rusick, talk to me what it's like to be sort of in your head and what mindset you have to have to put together these big events and to do what you do. Well, you're always under pressure to do it. You know, it doesn't matter whether it's Joshua Fury or Ben Eubank. After you've done a big event, that's kind of like irrelevant to yeah. people. Like it never happened. Like sometimes you see the criticism, you go, ooh, Matt Drew has been a bit slow lately. And then you just read off what you've just read off and they, they slight, it's forgotten. So you're only ever as good as your last event. And at the moment, you know, we go into Ben Eubank as one of the biggest fights we've ever done, quite frankly. And I knew it was going to be big. I probably didn't think it would be as big as it's going to be next week. We've seen across the numbers. And, you know, it's, I don't say it's like business as usual, but you, we, it's expected from us to produce these big events. So, you know, when we did Canelo Triple G, Joshua Rusick, Taylor Serrano, Ben Eubank, it's just expected now from us. But that also increases the pressure because you don't really get a lot of credit for putting those fights on because it's just become expected over time. Well, I'll give you the credit. Obviously, you and your team put together you know, a hell of a production, hell of a show. How proud are you, the team at Matchroom, for the work they do to make it as good as it is? Yeah, amazing team. And, you know, also, when I started in the boxing division... Leisure centres. Yeah, but not just that. It was me, John Wishausen and Frank Smith. Three of us. There's about 50 now in the team globally, you know? And I'm very proud to go to the various offices around the world, to stand at the shows around the world, especially Vegas the other week, you know, when you're thinking, wow, we're really doing this, you know? And it, I think it's only really when you're done or when you're finished that one, you get appreciated, and two, you actually respect what you've done. See, I'm actually my biggest critic, so a lot of the time, I'm, not, I'm never standing there going, wow, I can't believe what we're doing. We're doing. But we should. And over time, when it's all said and done, we will look back and go, I can't believe we did that. I'm going to say, because it's like a boxer's career when they, they only get credit when they retire yeah. or sadly seem to be passed away and everyone goes, oh, what a great fighter. Do you, so, do you, so you want me dead? No, you said that, mate. But, so when you go home and you have it two minutes to yourself, do you look back and think, really. okay, now we've, we've, we've come from yeah. okay, leisure I, centres I, to, yeah, to I, MSG? I, I tried around a Canelo Triple G fight and I did like when we did the grand arrival I was thinking wow I used to come here as a kid and see this and um, but honestly like you're dealing with problem after problem so you never really get the chance just to you know say can't believe what we've done like because something's happened there's a problem there's another show you're flying here you're flying there so the whole thing is a roller coaster of which one day we'll get off and think fucking hell what a ride Absolutely. Well, speaking of problems and things that we've been having, we'll come on to Tyson Fury. Anthony Joshua talks to start with. He's in, yeah. I was, get you, get you. I was thinking, wow, he's really going to do an interview, not asking about that. Well, that's a bit stupid of me if I didn't, but we'll move on to it. Um, apparently this morning there's been an extension, a Tyson Fury extension. Tell me where we are and where we're up to it, because I'm hearing things that he's definitely fighting Char. Yeah. And then, but it, one, one thing I have took from this, it seems like, Matchroom and Queensbury are on the same page. Am I right in saying that? Yeah, absolutely. And actually, I can't fault them. And they can't fault us in this situation. The only thing that's frustrating and baffling is, is um, Tyson Fury's deadlines. But a lot of what he says is actually not true. You know, we haven't had the contract for 14 days. When we agreed terms for this fight, it took them about eight days, nine days to send a contract. I'm not mad on that, by the way, because it's such a huge fight. But when we got the contract, it was all over the place. So we spent last week on the phone every day to them, having yeah. Zoom calls, getting it in a good place. I mean, don't forget, you heard from both sides last weekend, just gone, that things are going well. Then Tyson Fury says it's got to be signed by Monday. It was never going to get signed by Monday. But on Monday, we sent a final draft of the agreement to Queensbury. He came out and said, the fight's off, you haven't signed, you're a dosser, etc., etc. So you kind of down tools, AJ's like, whatever. Then on Tuesday, George Ryan says, look, let me just try and see if I can talk to Tyson, talk to Tyson. Yesterday afternoon, we received back their comments on our final draft, which again, just process. Like, um, yeah, it's a big thing. Exactly. So we've got them, the team are reviewing them today, and we'll go back with our comments on their comments. Eventually... After a few back and forths, you get to a point with the drafts and the changes that it's acceptable to both terms. This is not, again, we're here for Chris Eubank against Conor Ben. 
when I when we sent the first draft of this contract with Callis Ireland and Wasserman who are our mates it took about two and a half months to sign the agreement for Ben Eubank it's not unusual yeah. so then George I spoke to George at midnight last night and he said uh, let me speak to Tyson Fury and try and convince him all of a sudden you see a post on Instagram going sign it today or else it's like it ain't getting signed today Queensbury no it's not getting signed today yeah. Queensbury have never said to us you need to sign this contract today because they, ca- they actually can't because they know it's not ready yeah. you know what I mean so they're trying to and by the way look Queensbury definitely don't want Fury to fight Manuel Char because it's going to cost them a fortune it's a terrible fight right so they want to make this fight and so do we but it's like they're having to convince Tyson to carry on the process and it's fine but not a day do you know what I mean today and then what's going to happen is tonight he's going to come out and go you dossers you didn't sign it again I'm moving on and fighting Manuel Char whereas what he should be doing is leave it to the team and let, let, let the process evolve You've always sort of alluded to that Tyson Fury gets a bit of a free ride with the things he says and no one ever questions him. I think, I think part of that is due to because A, access to actually ask him these questions, but also B, we've seen a sort of reaction online to this char thing and it's been very, this surely this can't be happening kind of thing. What, if he fights Manuel Char, what do you think the reaction will be? Because if, and, and Josh, yeah. They also offered Chisora to fight today. So maybe he fights Chisora, you know? So, I don't know, I mean... If AJ fought Manuel Char, but I've said this before again about Tom Schwartz, about Sefer Seferi, about, about Pianetta, like AJ would, even off the back of two defeats, AJ would be crucified for fighting Manuel Char. Even now, you think of two defeats? Yeah, he's not even ranked. But, 19th in the outside. But, but when I say <laughs> two or three weeks ago, I think, I'm hoping I'm wrong. But I reckon he's going to end up fighting Manuel Char. And then uh, 10 days later or a week later, they're going at it on Instagram randomly. Yeah. Like, if the AJ fight can't get made, why not fight Joe Joyce? Yeah. He's in the same camp. Yeah. It's a tremendous fight. So, but he won't. He'll fight Manuel Char. And everyone will go, but I've seen that, I see the response from people online. It's, it is, it, you know, I think that even they've had enough. And I hate doing these interviews because it's fucking boring and it's tedious. That's, that's why, why I didn't start with it. That's why yeah. us and Queensbury, like we've done a good job of just beavering away yeah. at this. And if we can't get it done, hopefully it can get done in the future or we can start the conversation. Zach Parker against John Ryder, that's come up. Boatsy against Yard, that's come up. So in, on the whole, that, that side is very positive. I just want to say, is this not like a blessing in disguise? Because there's always been this thing years ago about Queensbury and this lunch with Frank Warren that never happened yeah. because of COVID. But this could lead to like Anthony Yard, Boatsy, yeah. all these other ones. Is this sort of the silver lining out of it if it doesn't happen? I thought that on Monday. When Fury came out and said the fight's off, I thought, what a fucking waste of time. But then I thought, but actually... Like, we probably could make Ryder Parker out of this. We might make Boatsy Yard. And actually, like I said, I've got nothing negative to say about Queensbury. And honestly, whether they choose to or not, they can't say anything negatively about the way this has been handled. Right, let's move on to why we're here today. Connor Ben, the destroyer. I spoke to him today and he, um, he talked about someone else's question. They kept asking about the magnitude of the event. And he, and he had magnitude. And he just said... It's just a fight. Yeah. I'm just going, I want to go in there and iron him out. Yeah. Um, what do you make of his mindset? It's pretty impressive to say he's moving up no, two weights. I, I think that's good because the last thing he really should be doing here is losing his rag. You know, he mustn't lose his rag in this fight. He's got to stay calm, be in the moment and box to instructions. Yes, we know he's going to go in there. We know he will lose his rag at the time. We know he'll trade up because he's so exciting to watch. But he's got to box to instructions. It's a massive fight, massive occasion. Fight week's going to be huge. And he's got to keep his calm. I'm not saying there's no pressure on Conor when I ask this question, but this is almost like, in a way, a free hit. He carries his dad's, um, the family name on his back, but ultimately, everyone in boxing who I speak to, it's like, Chris is too big for him. So for him, if he has a good performance, not that he's looking about what happens if he loses, but if he puts up a good show, it's really a, a win-win for him. Whereas when you look at Chris, if he loses to Conor Ben, this is the end of the line for him, isn't it? Uh, yeah, I believe it is. I mean, there are there is pressure on both fighters, but I think you know Connor's a slight outsider. But I don't see it like that. You know, I think on a level playing field, Connor's a big favourite in this fight. But I think with the weight, I think it's a 50-50 fight. And you know, you say there's no pressure on Connor. At the end of the day, he's defending really an opportunity to fight for the welterweight world title. And if you lose, it's never good. 
depend, doesn't care, doesn't matter what weight class it's at. But I feel like with Eubank, you know, this 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 means more to Connor than yeah. it does to Eubank, and that that's a lot because of the history of you know the family feuds between the two. What do you make of the antics he's meeting on Instagram? But yet at the same time, his dad's saying it's not safe, and he, he, it's a bit he, of a contradiction. He better make the weight. Um, but I, I expect him to. I think he looks lean, and um, he's a pro, and I expect him to hit the number. Eddie Earn, thanks for talking to Interboxing. We'll catch up again. Thank you.